Hello my friends, it seems like we are facing the start of the new mobilization campaign inside the Russian Federation. Well, at least today their parliament voted for many of the restrictions that will be applied for the Russian people. To be more particular, Russian males. So this is the screen of the voting, 87.6% voted for it. And no one against it, uh, the rest were just absent. So from now on, all of the Russian men that will have the military notice to join the army will be limited in their constitutional rights even before joining the army and the most important thing that the notice that will be delivered could be the electronic one and there is the big government electronic service in russia where most of the adult population are connected to and they will have the prescription notice to join the army through that service and from now on they also enable to delete their account and automatically then the man got the notice he is unable to exit the country he's unable to drive a car he's unable to get loans or to purchase something big like property or even get married this law was taken so fast that some of the members of parliament complained that they hadn't had any opportunity to read the document there was just a one guy who made the presentation about the law and he asked everyone to vote for it well everyone voted except one who actually didn't vote <laughs> basically what it means that russia do not need to find the man around their country if they have the electronic prescription notice to go to the army finally they'll found out every man because humans are the social species and we need to interact between each other and we need to use our bank cards to pay for something and Russia may find the trace to search for every man. And clearly this law was taken against the current Russian Federation constitution because there the only restriction applies for the citizens should be in case of the war state. And Russia is not in a war state. They have the special military operation, which Putin may cancel every day. Yeah, together me and you, we know that it is the full-scale war and Ukraine declared the martial law on its territory and that's why we have some restrictions in constitutional rights of our citizens, which is, I would say, okay, because we are defending our country. But as for the Russia, it is the illegal act taken by the parliament and they should be prosecuted. However, as always in Russia, they may take any kind of law and they don't care about their constitution. Constitution. And that's the main difference between the Russian dictatorship, or you may call it autocracy, and the other free world. The constitution for many countries is like a Bible, but for Russia, it's the toilet paper. And the Russian publics went completely crazy about that notice that everything is over, they will be taken to the army. Moreover, the members of parliament asked the Russian men to give up their jobs abroad and go to serve in the Russian army. I wonder if someone would go back to Russia after they left it. And I expect many more Russian men leaving Russian territory very soon. But those are not refugees in any case. Those people would like Russia to occupy Ukraine, including Kyiv and maybe Lviv, but they afraid to do it personally. And that's why they're leaving their country, forgetting to put off the Z symbols from their cars. Run for your life, run to the hill. So Putin now is searching for some options, at least he still has the nuclear weapons, but he also has the mobilization. He did it before and he tries again to do so. He cannot use nukes, maybe he would like to, because China is against it. And the second reason is that payback is imminent, maybe for him personally. So I do not expect him to use the nukes, maybe just before his death. But it could be too late for him to use nukes. Anyways, he has just one option, new mobilization. Because his last wave of mobilization was just grounded in Ukrainian soil. Remember the case with A-50 modification of Illusion 76 Russian AVAX airplane? Well, the operation was conducted by Ukrainian special forces. It was confirmed by United States actually, because they say that the leak the major one that went to the social media is truth 
And there is also the information about the sabotage attack that Ukrainian special forces conducted. I want to say this operation was very successful because airplane still was able to fly from the base, but I think there could be some sort of the damages done to the most sensitive parts, the radars of that airplane. And about this major league event, well, potentially it may hurt the relationships between allied countries because it was revealed that United States spies spied on South Korea for example. And today South Korean officials say that they are quite frustrated about it. Also, there was the information that the United States pushed the South Korea to provide more weaponry to Ukraine, and South Korea refused to do so. Moreover, from those documents we were able to find out that Egypt is the allied country of the United States, was going to send to Russia around 40,000 rockets. Plus other ammunition and negotiations about it were very secret but finally revealed with a huge leak. And I personally think that all of those classified documents that leaked to the press and firstly to the social media, they're quite trustworthy because they touch every country. And I would say not in a good way, they're not good for Russia, they're not good for United States, for Ukraine or any kind of other country involved in those documents. So we understand that it's the big geopolitical game, but speaking about the war between Russia and Ukraine, it is only black and white. And I'm very happy that we are on a good side of this war. The Ukrainian Defense Minister Reznikov said that they have some surprise for Russia in the sea and they may repeat something that happened to the Moskva ship more than one year ago. Well, I guess he was speaking about some sort of the submarines or underwater drones that may attack, for example, Sevastopol Bay, but it's hard to perform because the entrance to the Sevastopol Bay is mined nowadays and they also put the underwater net to close the access for any kind of the submarines. The only way how you can get into the Sebastopol Bay is using the ships over water or the airplanes or the drones. Speaking about submarines, well, they may target the Russian ships then they're in the open sea. But Russia hasn't any kind of those type of the ships like Moskva in the Black Sea. They have one more ship like that, but it's in the North Ocean. But there are many more military ships that the Ukrainian army may potentially target using the submarines and those ships are used by Russia to bomb the civilian infrastructure in Ukraine. So one more announcement from the Ukrainian side and I guess still it's better to perform the action and then announce it as it was done with Moskva ship because Russians might take precautions. As for our soldiers in UK, the major part has finished the training before the counter-offensive action of Ukraine and now they're leaving the the campus, the barracks and the military base, you can see how officers are lined to greet our guys Then they are leaving their facility and I guess we had one of the best trainings out there. The instructors were not only from UK but also from Canada, Norway, Sweden and many other countries. And you see our army is not only experienced but also has the best training nowadays and Russia they have mobilized soldiers. Quite interesting information is coming from Denmark. Their Minister of Defense is looking to send the Western-made jets to Ukrainian army. But they are not going to make it solo as the single country. It should be done in collaboration with other partners. He expects that after Ukraine gets all of the MiG-29s from Poland and Slovakia, there should be the transfer of the Western-made jets. I guess those would be F-16s. But not only, we know that UK agreed to train our pilots to fly Eurofighters. Plus, we have the similar information from France. Our Prime Minister went to Canada on Boeing 737, quite a long flight, and you can see the livery of the plane. They have the planes and symbol with pray. Pray for the jets to be delivered to Ukraine. Well, I'm sure that those will be delivered very soon. 
this year because without capable aviation it's impossible to return the occupied territories back well mix also nice but they're a little bit outdated and western airplanes are much better they have better radars for the long range and also long range missiles that's what we need because russia may target our mig 29s with their sukhoi su 35s from a far distance while i'm recording this video we got the very terrible information the video was published on the russian resources on their telegram channels how they decapitate uh, one of the ukrainian warriors and uh, after there was one more video published that many warriors were decapitated by russians and their bodies were just lying uh, around the field those bastards that do it uh, they should be punished all right guys and about the fpv drones that the ukrainian army start to use massively on the front lines before mainly we got dji and other drones that are commercially built for cinematography but we use them for the air surveillance and they fit fantastic into that job and today I got the message from one of the volunteers who helped to buy the drones to Ukrainian army and he asked me maybe it's better to buy the FPV drones for Ukraine. But you cannot do it. You cannot just buy the FPV drone that may carry good load on the board to deliver it, for example, to the truck. So what Ukrainian volunteers did, they start to create the big FPV drones that are capable to carry some sort of the load and we start to produce them massively. And that's the only way how you can build the fpv drone for this particular job and russians also saw the effectiveness of the drones it's better to say experience the effectiveness and they start to build them in the russian federation but not as massively as ukraine start to produce so do not search for some sort of the fpv drone to deliver it to ukrainian army it's better to provide with dji drone and they work together dji drone looks from above providing the surveillance and FPV pilot flies the drone actively into the target and also you need to have the good piloting skills to fly the FPV drone for the big DJI or small DJI drones you don't really need to have the skills because of the automatic flight control systems so every drone performs its particular task on the front lines all right we have some news report from Prigozhin but actually I call him Urka because he looks like Urka some sort of the prison from the Siberia and he's very often in this room with a socket and with a map on the desk and he says that Russian regular army now supports Wagner from the flanks so we are speaking about the Bakhmut city and now Russian regular army including the Russian airborne divisions is concentrated over here and here on the flanks so Wagner can move their forces out from the flanks to concentrating on pushing Ukrainian army outwards from the Bakhmut city and still there is no any chance for russia to encircle this area basically because of the ukrainian reinforcements they cannot do it well after the new mobilization announcement maybe after a few months russia may gather around 400,000 new soldiers and they may try to advance further but from the last wave of mobilization they advanced not very far the most of the offensive actions were done by the Wagner army during the winter campaign and Russian mobilized soldiers were used to recover the losses. Those soldiers are in lack of the military experience and any kind of the training and also in lack of the discipline. And we have even the leaks from the south front where Russian command restricts uh, Russian soldiers in having the military equipment and guns because they drink too much and they can shoot themselves but here again we are speaking about only mobilized soldiers that were civilians not long time ago but still russia has trained soldiers in their army much less compared to the last year but still they have them and today there is no big movement on the front lines everything is standstill and it is the good news for ukrainian army because time plays in ukrainian favor even if Putin announced the new mobilization tomorrow, he is still late with it for many months because those soldiers, they need training to join the Russian army at least two or even three months. 
without the proper training they would just be a cannon fodder they will not change anything and ukraine also has the mobilized soldiers but they got the training from our guys who went into the training in the uk in the united states canada whatever and now they can teach properly our guys so mr urka is now happy about his flanks in bakhmut but I guess it's not for a long time. I think that's the only main use we have for today, my friends. And now please press the like to this video. And also, if you want to support my channel, there are some links available in the video description below. And you also may support me on Patreon or in the sponsorship on this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your help and support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.